Scott Pixel donates $10 and says, I have only one thing to say. Save all the animals. Forever! Oh, and no XP allowed in Ori in the Blind Forest. Good luck to all the runners. We have Salt and Sanctuary coming up, and right after that will be a Magic Sword run. We still have a donation incentive going for that, where you can choose the ending. The good ending or the bad ending. The bad ending just overtook the good ending and is currently leading by the slimmest of margins, only about $10 separating the two. Beyond that, we also have uh, the option to choose which monkey will be played for Super, Super Monkey Ball Adventure All Difficulties Run. The choices are Baby, Gone Gone, Me Me, and I I. There's also the Mirror Mode Incentive for Battle Clash, which is a Super Scope game, where the runner will complete the first three stages by facing away from the TV and using a hand mirror to aim. We have a $30 anonymous donation. Been lurking on these streams for a long time. Now I'm finally able to make a donation. Thank you to all the runners, announcers, and everyone behind the scenes who makes AGDQ possible. You guys rock. We have a $7.77 donation from Anonymous who simply says, good luck to all the runners. Taking a look at some of our bid wars right now and incentives, we also have two bonus games that were put up. Kirby Tilt and Tumble, run by The Guest. That has been met well over the $8,000 goal. We still have the bonus going for Super Metroid Rotation, which the goal for that is $15,000. We're only at $852.55 so far. For those of you who aren't quite sure what Super Metroid rotation means, it's Super Metroid, but all the stages, not the TV screen, the stages are rotated 90 degrees. Meanwhile, speaking of Super Metroid, for the save versus kill the animals race, it is a bit depressing right now how much kill the animals is winning by. Or enjoyable, depending on 
how you feel about that. Currently, Kill the Animals is at about $17,000, and Save the Animals is at about $10,000. We've got all week, people. Get those donations in now. Meanwhile, we have another bid war going on for the Undertale True Pacifist ending. Specifically, how do we handle the final boss? We can comfort them or we can shun them. So far, comfort them is at about $1,700 and shun them only has about $300. So if you think that jerk doesn't deserve our hugs, get your bids in for that. There's also a bid war in Undertale to name the fallen human. There are several options people have donated for for that, but currently the lead is held by Temi, with a comfortable $1,400 lead over the next option. We have a $10 donation from Fenolo, AG, AGDQ, making it worth waking up on a Monday. We also have $5 from Hlitzkjalf, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, watching since CGDQ 2010. You guys already gave me so many laughs and tears. The minimum that I can do is donate for the cause. I wish I was there. that the ending choice for Magic Sword is heating up a bit. Good ending just took the lead again by about $15 over the bad ending. like to thank you once again for watching AGDQ 2017 benefiting the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Right now it appears we are ready to go, so let's head to Salt and Sanctuary being run by Grumelios. Live then? Hey, yeah, we're live. All right, sweet. <laughs> so uh, the file name that won was We Bring You La Salt. <laughs> So there we go, there's that. Last minute snipe on that one. It was <laughs> yep. in third all day yesterday. The, the run will start in just a second. This character creation does not affect the functionality of the run, but I think this character looks kind of cool. Um, so if we're ready, I can give a countdown. All ready? All right, uh, three, two, one, go. Good luck. <laughs> now let's do this. <sighs> okay, so welcome. Um, this is my Let's play a Salt and Sanctuary. <laughs> um, for anyone who's never played this before, this game is basically 2D Dark Souls. So if it's looking uh, dark and gritty, oh my god, I forgot to remap something. We're going to do it live. I can fix this. 
I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to fix this. He's coming for you. Yeah, there he is. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, nope, I'm dead, I'm dead. Perfect start. <laughs> Perfect start. Perfect well, that gives start. us time for introductions anyway. <laughs> yeah, um, so I'll have to go back to that fight. I'll have to remap controls. It didn't copy over on Steam. That's okay. So we'll start the commentary for real in one second. This is a, a wonderful, wonderful start. Uh, so I guess let's do introductions, and then we'll kind of try to put this train wreck back on the, back on the tracks. Um, so my name is Gromelios. Let's see. Hey, I'm, uh, uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, I'm Terra Twit one And the roost is loose. Uh, okay, so anyway, as I was saying, uh, this game is Salt and Sanctuary. It's 2D Dark Souls. Uh, I was meant to fight that last boss, and I'll get back to it in just a second. Uh, the category that I'm doing today is all bosses, which as a category is exactly what it sounds like. Um, there's going to be a total of 23 bosses to kill in the run. Uh, the first boss is the Unspeakable Deep, that guy on the ship that I'm going to have to go back to. Um, the idea is that when you fight that guy, you're actually supposed to be killed by him, and it would take you to the mainland. You can see that since I did die to him, I was taken right back to the mainland. Uh, I wasn't supposed to die to him. And it's actually funny because in a casual playthrough, if you die to that guy, there's no way to get back. But we can get back there through cheating. And so we'll do that uh, in just a second right here. So just give me a second. We'll get right back to the boss fight. <laughs> just ignore this for now. <laughs> casual ladder scratch. <laughs> we'll be back there in just a minute. And I will explain what in the world this trick is. You'll see it actually quite a bit in the run. Shoutouts to Jay Hobbs and Shovel Knight yesterday. He said uh, ladders are always slow. Not in this game. <laughs> Not in this game. Okay, and we're back. So this is the first boss, the Unspeakable Team. <laughs> Let's just pretend that never, ever happened. So as I mentioned, you're supposed to die to this guy. But it is possible to kill him, which I have to do first and foremost because this is uh, an all-bosses run, and he's a boss. Um, he's also going to drop some good resources that are going to put me in a good position for the rest of the run. My hands are shaking, holy crap. Um, to make the fight easier, since this guy is so tanky, I started my character as a cleric, because clerics start with three blessed pages, which are a weapon resin that make you do holy damage. I have three of them right now, and I'll be exhausting all three during the fight. Otherwise, uh, in terms of strats for this guy, there's not that much to say. Uh, he has three attacks, and only one of them is actually dangerous. So I'm going to hope he doesn't do that one very often. It also happens to be the slowest attack. Uh, more interesting is the fact that this guy will stagger every four hits. So uh, as I'm doing this fight and as I'm commentating, I'm counting up to four hits over and over again. That tells me when I have to dodge and when I can just keep swinging to stagger the guy. Otherwise, we're just going to kind of swing and, until he's dead. The blessed pages help a lot here. Grim is making it look easy, but when I tried to learn this run, I tried this fight for about an hour and then said, yeah, time to turn on God mode. Yep. <laughs> there is God mode. Very useful for learning. Be nice if you could use it in the run, but that would be cheating. <laughs> Watch your health, by the way. Watch my health? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I will actually be killed in one hit. Ordinarily, um, you'll notice right at the start of the run, I removed all of my armor. The reason is uh, the same as, as a Souls run, where having less armor makes you move more quickly. And there's one particular trick called long jumping that we'll get back to very soon, where uh, it's very, very important that you're low on... Oh my god, that was scary. Very, very important that we're low on nice. armor. Okay, one down, one down. This is fine. So now I'm going to spawn on the mainland, uh, not at the original spot, which is where I was supposed to spawn. We're going to spawn on the sanctuary. Uh, sanctuaries in this game are like bonfires in Dark Souls. Kind of throughout this run, I'll be comparing it to Dark Souls in a handful of spots. So if you aren't familiar with Dark Souls, you might lose out on a little bit of it, but... None of the concepts are too complicated. I'll be able to level up here, and then I can also do some various kinds of uh, menuing. I can place NPCs. I can go through the skill tree. Uh, you put points into the skill tree by using items called black pearls, which you get. You get one every time you kill a boss, and you can also just pick them up in the world. We're focusing primarily on the ability to pick up a two-handed weapon that he'll be using to pretty much destroy the bosses super quickly later on in the run. Mm -hmm. So right here I'm selling two items that I got from the first boss uh, for a total of 10k gold, and then I'm buying two bells of return, which uh, are a pretty useful item that we'll get back to later. First I have to do this trick, which you've supposed to be a surprise, but you've actually already seen it. And I have to do a little visual cue here. Okay, so we do this and this, and then over here. 
There we go, nice. developer island. <laughs> Nicely done. Yep. Okay, uh, so primarily the item I just bought there uh, is called the Jaws of Death. It's this late game weapon that you can get legitimately, but uh, like I said, not until late game. So it's super overpowered, and you'll get to see just how overpowered it is very soon. Uh, that area, you're not supposed to be able to get to. It should be obvious that that ladder thing is a, a glitch, and like I said, we'll get back to it and explain it a little bit later. We're just trying to even the playing field, considering they're all going to one-shot you. We might as well one-shot them back. Exactly, exactly. So this next boss is kind of the true first boss of the game, since I'd be shocked if anyone didn't die to the unspeakable deep in their casual playthrough. Uh, this guy's going to go down in five hits. That's how overpowered this weapon is. He can hit you during cutscenes. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, he can. Hopefully he won't. Um, a lot of times in the run, too, you'll see me just kind of waiting. Uh, it's because of stamina. So there he goes. <laughs> Hard video game. <laughs> and this guy's going to drop uh, a bunch of gold. I want all of it because I want 4,000. There's the rest. It kind of takes a little bit to drop uh, because we have some more shopping to do. Do a little drop here. Uh, one of the next things you'll see me do is I'm going to drop into a little alcove and buy some bunch of items called Stained Pages. Stained Pages are primarily a weapon resin, just like the Blessed Pages, but these ones make me do dark damage. Uh, but they also have a very, very important secondary usage, which is that they can be used to desecrate sanctuaries. And uh, we'll get back to that mechanic later. Desecrating isn't a glitch or anything, it's just built into the game. But there is a very, very important side effect, which is going to let us do, I think, some very, very cool glitches later on. Good job on not pulling the lever back there. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Oh, we haven't actually talked about long jumping. Can one of you guys uh, give some details on that? Want to go for it? Uh, yeah, so long jumping is when you rebind a certain key to both jump and roll, or controller button, which Gwen does, and you press it both, you press your button, and it will execute a roll and a jump at the same time, which will allow a frame perfect trick, which you can see Gwen Elios do here, where he just flies across the screen. <laughs> throughout the map. Yeah, you'll be seeing it constantly. The, the time-saving implications of the trick are pretty obvious. We'll also just be able to straight jump over a bunch of gaps that are supposed to be uncrossable. Yeah, most runners complain about one-frame tricks, but Grim is, you know, doing 300 in a row just <laughs> oh, to yeah. move around in this game. Yeah, easy every time. <laughs> uh, the item I use back there is called a Warhorn. It's going to increase my stamina regenerate for, I don't know exactly how long, but enough time. Uh, this is also a good example of some of the platforming in this game. It's kind of one of the differentiators between this and Dark Souls, is that there is uh, a fair bit of platforming in this run. It's also Metroidvania, so later on you'll see me getting some skills. Well, technically you'll only see me get one skill because we just glitch the others. But it is a Metroidvania. Uh, this next boss is called the Mad Alchemist. He's also going to go down in five hits, just like the Sodden Knight. And it shouldn't be an issue. I need to wait for stamina. One, two, three. Good to fight. I should mention, too, for anyone who maybe hasn't played this, uh, I don't want you to mistake these bosses for being easy. The reason they're going down so fast is that uh, I'm using a very overpowered weapon that should be impossible to have at this point in the game. A bit more leveling. I'll be doing uh, leveling up and some Tree of Skill stuff a handful of times. And as you would expect, the items that I'm getting in the Tree of Skill are... Uh, are predetermined. Some of them just increase strength, which makes you do more damage. Some of them increase willpower, which gives you more stamina. And then there's some specific ones that I need to wield certain weapons and whatnot. <laughs> just casually flying through the world, don't worry about it. You want to talk about ladder clip? Yeah, this would be a good time. While I'm so this guy. basically, when you see him do that thing where he's kind of warping up and uh, diagonally when he's coming off a ladder like that, it's the same input as the uh, long jumps we were doing, where he's going to essentially roll and jump at the same time frame perfectly, but when you do it off a ladder like that, for some reason, it allows you to uh, port up like that. And it's, it, it's not completely free. You do need to mash with a certain cadence, but it's, it's not especially difficult. No, it's not like... Your hand does actually get tired when you're learning this run, but it's, it's doable. Next up is a boss called Kraken Cyclops. If it wasn't obvious, given that there's 23 bosses in what had better be less than 40 minutes, the bosses go by pretty quick, and that's going to be especially true in the second half of the run. Uh, for the first half of the run, there's a lot of uh, glitches, a lot of f kind of flying through the world, getting different skills and whatnot. There's that guy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this weapon is so OP, it's absurd. Uh, so now comes up one of the most interesting tricks in the entire game. It's called Reset Glitch. And 
What you just saw didn't look like much, but I actually now have two copies of the main menu open at the same time. So I'm going to load into the game with the main menu still open, like this, <laughs> um, at which point I'm going to reset my character all the way back to level one. The reason being that, like any RPG, the number of points you need to level up increases the higher level you are. So if I'm level one, then with the same amount of salt as I currently have, I can level up 12 more times, which gives me permanent stat increases in the tree of skill. And if it wasn't obvious, uh, since I didn't explicitly say this, in the bottom left of the screen, you'll see two displays. The bottom one is salt. That's uh, most similar to souls. It's a currency that you use to level up and to level up your weapons. And then there's also gold, which is used for general buying and selling from uh, other merchants. Right here, I'm using ladder clip to uh, go to an area of the game called Castle of Storms, uh, just because I'm going to teleport back later. Did we explicitly explain ladder clipping yet? Yeah, yeah, we talked yes. about it. OK, OK, yeah. It's a very, very cool trick and kind of bit of trivia. I don't think it's possible. This game was out on PS4 before PC, and it didn't have key rebindings. Without this, every single one of these would be a frame-perfect trick. So it would be basically impossible to do unless you were a literal god. Easy life. Easy life, <laughs> exactly. OK, so we'll go take this. And then you're going to see me place an NPC called a guide. Uh, a guide is an NPC that lets you teleport between sanctuaries and also sells a handful of items. You can just push me over here. <laughs> okay, so coming up is one of the most interesting parts of the run. Well, I have to upgrade. That's not interesting. Also, I should also say that I'm going to be upgrading my weapon to level 7 before the end of the run, but I don't have all the upgrade materials I need. So right now I can only get up to 4. But in a second, you're going to see me use the secondary uses of, usage excuse me, of the stain page, which is desecrating a sanctuary. Uh, for all intents and purposes, you can think of desecrating a sanctuary as nullifying the sanctuary, which matters because it's going to completely break bells of return, which you haven't really talked about yet. They are like homeward bones um, from Dark Souls, in that when I use one, I'm going to be uh, teleported back to the sanctuary that I rested at most recently, but you also can't teleport to a desecrated sanctuary. So the next time I use a bell, rather than being teleported anywhere in particular, I'm just going to spawn in place, which lets me do... Uh, also, this boss is uh, very, very quick. Very nice. Thank you, thank you. It's going to let me do some very interesting tricks. Uh, first and foremost, something called Bell Drop. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you'll see it in just a moment. Should be pretty clear why this is broken. And there we are. Good job. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> So the way that works is, like I mentioned, bells of return are now broken because we desecrated the sanctuary. So every time I use a bell, it's going to spawn me in place. I used a trick which is similar to something called bell dupe, which we also haven't talked about, but I've also been duplicating bells. There's lots of tricks. If I activate a bell in the air, I can land and be killed, and then I just get respawned in place. The downside is that I lose all my salt, but at this point in the run, it doesn't matter. It just lets us skip a huge part of the game and get down here very, very quickly. That's not the only one that you'll see, by the way. There's, I think, one more in this, and then in any percent, there's a few of them as well. There's at least one. And that one horn he just blew is to give himself extra stamina for these fights coming up. Mm -hmm. Stamina, for anyone who has played Dark Souls, you know that you have to manage your stamina or you won't be able to roll and your attacks will slow down and whatever. Uh, this game, I think, is actually quite a bit more unforgiving with, with its stamina than, uh, than Dark Souls is. Nice sound G, by the way. Yeah, okay, so you want this guy. <laughs> that guy is supposed to, thank you. By the way, that guy's supposed to come down to the ground. I have power attacks and basic attacks. And uh, you want that guy to fly down to the ground so you can get power attacks, and sometimes he just doesn't. I've never seen him stay all the way up at the top the whole time, though. Not only can he be a big troll because of that, but also, for some reason, they programmed it where the large boss's model will stack on top of his little bros when they come out. So yep. you can't see them behind him, and they can ruin your day quite easily. Mm. So I just exited and reloaded, and I spawned right at the place where I landed. This bell drop trick is so wonderful. Not only can I survive falls to my death, but I get my checkpoint reset, and I didn't even have to use the bell because I duplicated it. It's really fantastic. Um, also, that NPC I talked to back there gave me a new ability. Abilities in this game are given to you in the form of brands, like a cattle brand. And the thing I picked up is called Redshift. It's going to let me get through one specific barricade uh, later in the run. You, you probably won't even see it if you aren't familiar with the game, but it's necessary or I uh, would have to take a very roundabout route in one area. There's a little drop here, which is very consistent, but it looks really cool. And I think you die if you miss that. <laughs> uh, next up is a boss called the Bloodless Prince. Bloodless Prince is, I think, the second tankiest boss in the game, besides that very first one, the Unspeakable Deep, the one that 
definitely didn't kill me at the beginning when I said it was not going to happen. <laughs> like, like, literally, I was talking to these guys and said, as long as I don't die to Unspeakable Deep, nothing else matters. <laughs> so I've never died like that before. That was unique. Uh, this guy's very tanky. There's not much to say, so that would be a good time if you have a handful of donations. All right. Well, Otherwise, I'll just... We have $30 from the Flying Marlin. I couldn't think of any good salt jokes, but good luck, Grim. We also have $25 from Swedish Cheese, who says, had to donate during Grim's salt run. Keep your sodium levels balanced. Putting this toward Ori de Oreo. There we go. Nice. <sighs> okay, so a second ago you saw me, well, maybe you didn't, but I used a bell on the stairs that I intentionally did not duplicate, even though I could. Uh, so now I can exit and reload, and I'll just respawn on the stairs. And coming up very quickly is another bell drop, that thing that lets me survive falls to my death, but this one is way more precise. And it leads to a, uh, a run killer boss. I think I've seen you lose more runs to this guy than probably anybody else. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Good. That didn't look like much, but you have to do that pretty precisely. This guy's called Karstar the Cruel, and he is extremely dangerous because he'll one-shot me with pretty much anything. And specifically in his second phase, he has this attack that is kind of like a triple attack, and all three are nearly frame-perfect dodges. So to get around it, that's fine, that's fine, I can fix that. My mistake. Uh, to get around it, I'm going to try to kill him in such a way that he never has a chance to do it. His, his phase two triggers at less than 50% health. And this actually isn't a big deal. Look where I'm going to spawn. And there's the fight. <laughs> nice. Yep. Benefits of uh, being able to set save points wherever we want, which is absolutely not intended. Literally cheating. Yep, literally cheating, exactly. Also, this guy staggers every three hits, so I can use that to my advantage. The fight will now be more difficult because I don't have... Um, okay, what's it going to do? Whoa, 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 that was odd. This is fine. That actually worked out kind of well. That's a no nice thing. dodges, yeah. Okay, Th that's the attack we were talking about. That attack is nearly impossible to dodge. Um, so it's kind of unlucky that I got knocked down and was kind of out of position, but I also spawned right outside the boss fight, so uh, not too big of a problem. And the most important thing here is that I get my salt back. So ordinarily, wait, no, I lost my salt. Never mind, I don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, losing my salt there is bad. It's not like a run killer or anything. It just means I'm going to be a little underpowered for some of the later fights. I don't think I finished my thought before. This guy staggers every three hits, so I can... Uh, Use that knowledge to my advantage as well. If you wanted proof that this game is actually difficult, here, here's your proof. All right, let's let's try this. Continuing the theme. There from, we uh, go. Nice. Got him. That fight is not supposed to go like that, but we made it. It's fine. Continuing the theme from that boss earlier, I like how they animate the boss's gigantic animation on top of your character model, so you can't see yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, this next section is just going to be a lot of long jumping. You'll get to see just how quickly we can move through the world. It, it's very, very, very useful. Uh, coming up over here, by the way, are some unicorns, which take note of them because this will not be the last time you see them. It will be in this run, but in any percent, they're uh, very useful. These guys are kind of notorious. They're called spindle beasts, but really they're unicorns. And they're notorious because they are very aggressive, very erratic, lots of RNG, and most dangerously, they can one-shot you even through armor and I don't even have any, so I would just get absolutely destroyed. But So to get around that, we just use some cycling platforms and uh, dodge them. The tricks just fly by in this game. Uh, coming up next is I'm going to join a certain cr uh, creed. Uh, creeds are like Covenants and Dark Souls. The one I'm joining is at the bottom of this giant mine shaft, and it's called the Order of the Betrayer. To get down here, I have to fall through all these platforms and take lots of damage, though. So to get around that, I drank a potion at a certain uh, part, in order to continually heal all the way down. And if I move quickly enough, I can just barely survive the fall. So in a second, I'll be able to take a sanctuary, so it'll be a bit of a relief. Believe it or not, um, during that whole part up until just now when I'm getting the sanctuary, uh, I cannot refill my healing flasks, which are like Estus flasks. I don't think I said that, but they will refill at everything, every single sanctuary. Anything I missed so far? No, I think you're doing good. Yeah. Here's our friend the blacksmith again. If I didn't say this explicitly, you can place NPCs in sanctuaries. They aren't just, just there on their own, although they can be. It's kind of interesting because when you place sanctuaries, the order uh, from which all the different people run in, like whether they run in from the left or the right, is random. 
How did I still get up to 34? Oh, okay, I guess I did get myself back. Just kidding, I'm not underleveled. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a relief. You can do the run, like if I lost my salt to Karstra, but it's uh, a pain. Also, this is the last time you'll see the Tree of Skill. Not the last time I'll level up, but last time you'll tree, uh, see the Tree of Skill. Coming up next is uh, another very dangerous part. So you've already seen me desecrate a Sanctuary by using the Stained Page. This time I'm going to expunge one, which involves... Uh, oh, wow, what a pro. This guy's really random. <laughs> which involves not only desecrating a Sanctuary, but sticking around to kill a handful of enemies. And of all those enemies, only one of them is really seriously dangerous. You guys know the one I mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's this horse-mounted enemy in the second phase. So to make it easier, I'm going to use uh, an extra Stained Page. Okay, so there's that guy. I'm going to dodge him first because there's another enemy I'd like to take out. We're going to dodge him again when he comes back. It is possible to kill him a bit more quickly, but consistency is more important here. I've lost way too many runs to this spot. So then we go one, two, three. Nice fight. Nice. Thank God. <laughs> Thank you. It's a very difficult encounter. Yeah. Because that went well, it may not have looked like much. But um, I used... Uh, if you notice that horse-mounted enemy, when I killed his horse, he fell onto the ground, and then I hit him twice to stagger him and killed him, means he never even got the chance to attack. He's really difficult because he has one attack that you can parry and one that you can't. They look identical, and one of them will one-shot you. <laughs> so it's just a, a big gamble. That's good game mechanics. Yeah, very good. Next up is a boss called Ronin Cran. Uh, I'm going to do two ladder clips to get there. On the way, though, I'm going to kill this Mimic to get an item called the King's Orders, which is going to let me upgrade my weapon to its maximum level of seven. Because we weren't doing enough damage before. No, no, we need way more. Oh, also, I didn't actually mention Flasks of Defilement. The whole reason I fell into that hole to join the Order of the Betrayers is that I wanted this item. It's a throwable that I can throw at bosses to make them take double or sometimes triple damage. Uh, it, the exact mechanics are a little bit odd. Oh, he's trolling me, huh? He's not playing nice. There we go. That's what we want. And there he goes. If that guy does that attack right at the beginning, you can get a very quick kind of flurry of attacks and kill him before he can counterattack. But he didn't give me good RNG. That's fine. Uh, anyway, Flash of Defilement heavily lower the defenses of a bunch of different bosses and makes them, uh, well, like I said, take double or sometimes triple damage depending on the specific defenses of that boss. I just use an item as well called a Crystal Sphere, which converts whatever sanctuary I'm at to my current creed, the Betrayers. The reason that matters um, is that uh, my flasks of defilement are not refilled unless I... Uh, they're not refilled unless I rest at a Betrayer's Sanctuary. By the way, uh, this attack is the coolest attack in the game. Moving right along to the Tree of Men, it is, I, in my opinion, the most creative fight in the game. It's also one of the most difficult casually, but ironically, one of the easiest in the speedrun because it's consistent. Consistency in this game is rare, like any Souls-like... Uh, you have to deal with lots of RNG on all the bosses. This is definitely my favorite boss fight in the run. It's super cool. Mm -hmm. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Yes, that's what we want. That's what we want. Then one, two, three. And that's Nicely the fight. Done. That fight is brutal if you mess up your cycles. Oh, we probably have time for a few donations. I'm just going to kind of move through the next area. All right, well, we have $20 from Marquise Dan. Sultan Sanctuary was one of the first games I ever played through with my wife, and we're both looking forward to watching a game that took us weeks to complete, get destroyed in a scan 42 minutes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wish I could watch it live, but I'll catch the VOD, and I know Grimelios will do a fantastic job. I appreciate the confidence. <laughs> we also have $5 from WolfRat49. Watching at work, don't tell my boss. <laughs> but I love this game so, so much. Stay awesome. This guy's called the Disemboweled Husk. He's going to go down in four hits. Um, and afterwards is a very interesting trick as well. Three. It's fine. I can tank one. So I'm going to use a Calling Horn here, uh, which is an item that lets me freely teleport to any sanctuary with a guide. And then I'm intentionally exiting and reloading, which is going to trick the game into giving me a new ability. That one redshift that I got way back after that stench most foul is the only ability I pick up legitimately. The thing I just got, even though you don't see any visual indication of this, is that uh, I got a trick. Let me try that again. I got a skill called Shadow Flip, which is just a glorified name for wall jump. 
Much edgier, though. Much, much edgier, edgier, yes. This game's pretty edgy. It is very, very gritty. I really do enjoy the visuals of this game quite yeah, the, a bit. The style is great. I love the boss names, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, side note, I didn't say this. Uh, this game is made by uh, a studio called Ska Studios, which is two people, a husband and wife team. Really? So, wow. Yep. So considering the scope of this game, and it is a very, very large game, uh, casually it took me, I don't know, probably 20, 30 hours to beat, and I didn't even hit all the bosses, and this was made by two people, so that's, I think, very impressive. This boss is called the Coveted. It's this giant axe guarded by two ghosts, and it's actually the axe that's the boss, not, not the ghosts. Wait for stamina. No, please, be nice, okay. <laughs> Wait, spooky. We got it, we got it. Spooky ghosts. They are spooky. Anyway, so what I tried to do there it didn't quite work, but if you stay far enough left in that arena, you never aggro the second ghost. He did aggro, but he didn't really cause much trouble. Coming up is the actual longest ladder clip in the game. We're going to go directly into the boss arena of the Dried King. Funnily enough, those monsters that he just clipped past can actually hit you out of your ladder clip here. They can. It's happened like, I think, twice to me ever. It's very, very unlucky, but it is possible. A few more donations, if you have them. Sure, we have $50 from Jazzer. I have to donate for Salt and Sanctuary. I love the game to death, and seeing it speedrun in AGDQ is awesome. I also want to at least encourage the runner to think about picking the Dominion ending. Good <laughs> luck to all the runners. Uh, the, the Dominion ending is, uh, like any speedrun, you kind of skip straight through all the actual interesting lore, which is actually very cool. Um, there's these kind of scarecrows that you can find that are the voice of the nameless god. It's, it's super creepy and ethereal. Um, and if you talk to all of them, you get the Dominion ending. But I unfortunately don't think we have time to do that. Mostly because I don't know where they all are. <laughs> mm. <laughs> As I mentioned, you're going to see the bosses uh, fly past. Uh, that guy's called Dried King. We're going to clip out of bounds here. Ladder clip is so fantastic. It lets you skip so much of the game. I can't even imagine how much longer this would take without ladder clip. Yeah, yeah. Or the long jump. Mm. Coming up next is a boss called the Untouched Inquisitor, and if things go well, I can kill it in three hits. Like, the fight, depending on the RNG, will barely even exist. It's so close that I'm just gonna use my stain page in advance. And it looks like I'm actually getting good RNG. The RNG being, will this boss fly close to the ground or not? There we go. There you go, <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> It, this weapon is ridiculously <laughs> overpowered. Also, keep in mind that I'm using flasks of defilement for every single fight. So on top of the already overpowered nature of, uh, of this playthrough, I'm doing even more damage to these guys. Next up, like I said, the bosses just fly past. It's something called the Third Lamb. It's one of my favorite bosses. That means difficult, but it's one of my favorite bosses from a design perspective. And it's similar to Ronan Cran, where there's kind of this charge attack that I really want this guy to do. And if he does, I can get a kill in one cycle. But we'll see. Nope. <laughs> we'll see whether RNG behaves. It's kind of interesting from a gameplay perspective how there's you know a half second of movement before it does the intro there. And it actually does have an effect on the run, because you know how he, he throws those flasks. If you throw a flask and then the name comes up while it's mid-air, you actually lose the flask. So there a lot of times he needs to wait before he throws it. Otherwise, he will uh, he'll lose it and not get the uh, defense down buff from it. Mm -hmm. This, uh, what I'm doing here is exiting and reloading again. It's exactly the same thing as before, but this time the skill that I'm getting is called the Dart Brand. It's a short mid-air dash, which apart from being convenient, is actually going to be necessary uh, for some platforming in a later section. Kind of as a side note uh, to this run, this game has a lot of interesting screen transitions, kind of fading effects, but a lot of times the gameplay starts instantly. So as Tara briefly mentioned earlier, every time you go into a boss fight, there's a little tiny cutscene. It is possible to both damage the boss and be damaged during that cutscene, which is technically a bug, but it's sort of like you're not supposed to be able to get to the bosses fast enough for it to matter. The only reason I can is that I'm long jumping. And uh, before that last sanctuary, while the game was loading in, I actually went and did a bunch of menuing. This is another three-hit boss, depending on RNG. It's a giant dragon, so it can also just casually fly away. We'll see what happens. Stop. 
there we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I don't think I ever beat this game casually. I think I rage quit on the final boss. It's a bit caught, Madon. Yep, yep. Um, next up is my favorite ladder clip in the game. So you've already seen ladder clipping. You've seen how I can fly through the whole world and ignore collisions. This time, I'm going to a boss called Murdiella Mal, which is at the top of an area called Mal's Floating Fortress. It's probably the most vertical area in the game, and it's also optional. I'm going to fly so far out of bounds that the camera's just going to get locked at the top of the world. And so in a second, you're just going to see me fly off screen, and then you'll see basically not much, until a boss slowly starts drifting in from the right side of the screen. I'll drop into the arena at 1,000 miles per hour, which should shatter every bone in my body, but it hopefully won't. It can, but it hopefully won't. Walk it off. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> uh, during this fight, we can probably read off another few donations. Sure, we have $10 from Anonymous. Hey, another $10 donation to Salt and Sanctuary. I always lose at the disemboweled husk, and I literally began writing this, and you beat him before I finished. How? <laughs> there we go. Good fight. Thank you. Um, that boss is extremely dangerous because magic in this game, uh, when it's used against you, is uh, really overpowered. It's mostly overpowered. Oh, volume warning. Volume warning on this fight. This is the one to lower the volume. There's one attack during this boss fight that for some reason is probably triple the volume of anything else in the game. It's More like, than once I've fallen asleep watching Grim Stream, Grim Stream like late at night and then this boss comes up and wakes me <laughs> right back up. Oh man, I'm getting trolled. Please, please be nice. Please be nice, please be nice. <laughs> you were not nice. <laughs> That's okay, I actually spawned very close to this, uh, this fight. So what happens is, I don't think I finished my thought from before. Magic in this game, when it's used against you, is very dangerous because it stun locks you after one hit. Which means that uh, if you're unlucky enough to get hit by one and there's a flurry of magic coming towards you, you're probably going to get hit by the rest and probably killed. Anyway, here's the boss fight again, so it doesn't take long to get back. And uh, the attack we mentioned that's really, really loud actually did not occur in this fight, but it might be here. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Thank you for lowering volume. Uh, that attack is very, very loud. <laughs> of course she's going to do it over and over. Man. Oh, boy. Oh, that was strange. <laughs> this round is going swimmingly. Just swimmingly. Of all, the, of all the fights to die to, though, this one is not bad because I do spawn so close. And I should mention as well, at this point, money and salt in the run are a non-issue. I'm not going to level up anymore. I'm not going to buy anything else. And I have plenty of resources. So all I'm losing is time, which is problematic in itself, but I'm not there's no chance of killing the run anymore. It's just a matter of how quickly can I do it. It's not the case for the rest. It is, uh, there's a number of spots that can be very, very dangerous. And there we go. <laughs> Good on, Chief. Mm -hmm. You guys can see why we have a nickname for this boss that rhymes with her name and we're not allowed to say on stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, this area is called the Salt Alchemancery. It's going to lead me to a boss called the Unskinned. Uh, the title you'll see is the Unskinned. It's really the Unskinned and the Architect. It's a two-in-one boss fight. There's this giant, well, it's a giant, and then there's a mage. By the way, volume can go back up if I think it already did, but that's the only really loud part. So I'm going to hope for good RNG. Uh, God RNG has them both run at you enough that you can, uh, that you can kill them both very quickly. Okay, good. There's one. That's very good RNG. And then I have to kill this mage. She can spawn a bunch of random mines that you have to be careful of, but there's the fight. Nice. Excellent. That was That's very really good, good RNG. Let's <sighs> make up for all the rest of it. So coming up next is uh, my favorite area of the game from a platforming perspective. Uh, I mentioned this early on. This game is 2D Dark Souls, but it has some differentiators. One is the Metroidvania. Two, there's a lot of platforming, which you've already seen, but this area really highlights it, especially since I now have that mid-air dash and wall jump. It's going to allow for some pretty cool platforming. First, I have to take a, a sanctuary, though. Technically, it's a shrine, but same idea. <sighs> Do you guys want to talk about the next boss coming up and why it's totally fair? 
<laughs> well, uh, like all the bosses in this game, the hitboxes perfectly match up with the visuals, <laughs> and nothing funky ever goes on. No, I've never been killed by broken hitboxes in this game, ever. I haven't lost world records on it or anything. Absolutely not. I'm not, I'm not bitter about it. <laughs> <laughs> Putting the salt in salt in sanctuary. Oh, God. The salt jokes are just abundant. They just flow like water in this thing. It's fantastic. Um, so anyway, there's that platforming in the last section. This is going to lead to a boss called, it's called the Forgotten King, singular, but it's actually three bosses in one. It's the three kings from one of the starting creeds, which from a speedrun perspective, or I guess even just a casual perspective, means you get triple the RNG to deal with. Don't get kicked. Oh, good lord. Yeah, the, the yellow, oh, I'll, I'll let you guys talk about this one. Yep, there yeah. it is, right off the bat, the, the kick. The one with the yellow in the middle, uh, he has a pretty much this instantaneous kick attack with no <laughs> advance warning whatsoever. This is, this is fine. This is fine. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not, not much I could do there. The yellow guy has a kick attack, which has no wind-up. For anyone who's familiar with Dark Souls, um, you know that the kind of whole gimmick behind the thing, I, I love Dark Souls, I don't mean that in a negative way, but the whole gimmick is that the game is very difficult, but it's fair in that you can see boss tells and stuff. And this game, for the most part, is very, very good about that. Like, in my opinion, this is the best Souls-like that I've seen that isn't an actual Souls game. That said, there are a few places where, like that boss fight, that kick has no wind-up from the yellow guy. So if I get kicked, I get knocked onto my back, and then if I'm unlucky, which I was, the mage will spawn a bunch of magic, and remember how magic stunlocks you. So by the time I get up, I end up getting stunlocked, and there's not a lot I can do about yeah, it. If you get hit by that kick, you're probably just dead. Yep. And unfortunately for this fight, it does actually take a, you know, a minute or whatever to get back here. But we're going to try again. Ideally, I would take out the mage first because the mage is so dangerous, but I spent a lot of time trying to route this thing, and it tends to not nice. work. One down, nice. one down. These bosses go down so quickly, and the second one's at, you know, nothing health. <laughs> get out of here. Yes, one, you two, three. Got Very it. Very nice. Wow. Yeah, if you can get them to luckily stack up like that, you can just mark that fight real quick. Mm -hmm. But as you've seen, you go down so quickly, and you can get kicked onto your back. Uh, there's only two bosses left in the run, um, so we are, we are getting there. Next up is a boss called uh, Kraken Dragon Scores, assuming I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is good RNG. That jump is uh, very, very nice. And another jump. I've wow. never gotten this. Be nice. Yes. That's One left. Pick. One boss left. The final boss called the, the Nameless God. Um, to get there, we're going to go through this area called the Still Palace, which is my favorite in the game uh, from a pure design perspective. It's this whole upside down area. The music is beautiful. It's going to lead into a boss fight that's way less beautiful. I mean, the music's cool, but the, f <laughs> the fight's pretty brutal. Time uh, this is coming up shortly after this boss. Not on the final hit, but... Yeah, it'll be after. close. This guy's going to go down in five hits unless he kills me first. So let's see what happens. As always, there's some specific RNG I'm looking for. Never a guarantee that you'll get it. Interesting. I interrupted his attack and the sound still played. I've never seen that. What are this you doing? This never happened before. This, oh boy, okay. That's the most dangerous attack. That's how you have to dodge nice it. Nice dodge. Very Thank nice. you. That's not that easy to dodge. Should be at one, two, three, four. Got it. Well done. Okay, time is not yet. It's very, very soon though. I'm going to go out this door and jump in a well, and then that's time. So we'll call it out. Just a few seconds. And time. Get an angel two. Oh, we got it? Okay. That's okay. That's okay. 3902 having to remap the buttons at the beginning is pretty good. <laughs> That's a first. That's a first. Um, so the credits here are cool, but we had the incentive for any percent. In the interest of time, I'm going to Alt F4 the game and just restart because the credits are unskippable. So if you wanted to see the credits, I uh, apologize. You'll have to watch them some other time. The music's nice, though. So we'll start up a new character, get into any percent. The any percent world record is four minutes and 47 seconds. <laughs> so for anyone who's, anyone who's never seen it, you're in for a treat. The run will not end in the way that you expect. I'll tell you that much. So the game's just launching back up here. Rooster, how are you guys doing? Doing yeah, great. Good. good run. Yeah, Thank that you. was nice. 
Thank you. Looking forward to this uh, any percent world record we're about to see. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> The, the, thing, the thing is that, like, um, the all bosses run, this game doesn't have a very active speedrunning community. Maybe that'll change, but right now it doesn't. And so, uh, the all bosses run can very much be improved. It's just difficult because there's so much RNG involved. You know, sometimes there's just nothing you can do. Um, for this run, I'm going to start as a paladin rather than a cleric. I'm also going to start with a naked challenge because um, it completely removes my armor. So, I guess if we're doing another timer on this, I can count down. Okay, three, two, one, go. Good luck. So this is going to be any percent. So a lot of what you'll see here is going to be kind of similar. As I mentioned, from a casual perspective, you're supposed to die to the first boss, but it's way faster to just exit and reload. So from here, I'm going to spawn on the mainland. Let me not. I actually reminded myself before the run, don't load up the wrong file. Uh, this time, I'm going to take a different creed. Last time, I took Devar's Light. This time, I'm taking the Three Kings. You'll see me move through kind of the same area, go through the same sanctuary, um, but very quickly I'll start pointing out the, uh, the differences. I'm going to remove these two rings because I'm going to be selling them uh, very soon. And unlike the other one where I kind of looped around and came back to do a bunch of leveling and whatnot, this is the last time we're going to see the sanctuary, so uh, see ya. <laughs> we're going to go through an area here called the Festering Banquet, same as before, to pick up the same merchant as before. But then I'm going to turn back to the right and go to a, a sanctuary that you didn't see in the last run. This ledge up here can be a little finicky, so let's hope for the best. All right, nice, got it. <laughs> Quick ladder clip. And then we're going to go place the, the same merchant, but we're going to be buying and selling some very different things. So here's the merchant. First thing I'm going to do is sell the two rings that I started with. Then I'm going to buy a bunch of items called light vessels. Exactly 12 of them, nice. Light vessels are another throwable item, uh, similar to Flask of Defilement, which is also throwable. But these ones just do holy damage. And I'm going to be using it to kill the only boss on the run, Queen of Smiles. Is he going to poison me? Yes, he is. All right, so I'm going to heal here to be safe. That poison eats away at you more than you think. You kind of have to hope for good bat RNG there. I'm just going to drop straight through. In the all bosses run, I had to make a lot of pit stops for items that I needed. Not the case in this run. I'm just going to try to get through this area as quickly as I can by long jumping over everything. And then I'm going to drop in here. And you remember from the last run, uh, this is the area that I desecrated. I'm going to desecrate it again and just leave. This is going to lead, like I said, to Queen of Smiles. Uh, it's the only boss you're going to see. And the strat to kill it is... Very, very direct. I'm just going to throw about a billion light vessels at it. <laughs> it's kind of funny, actually. You do have to be careful in this fight because uh, throwing these things does take stamina. And she can't attack like so, and I have to be, well, ready to dodge, and I wasn't. I should also mention that in the last run, I was underleveled. In this run, I am really underleveled. Okay, pretty good RNG here, though. Almost done, almost done. Got it. Nice. Nice. That's the only boss fight in the run. Congrats on beating the final boss. Oh, yeah, thank <laughs> you, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, now you're going to see me do the same bell drop as before, but I can just do it straight from here. Um, I don't think I explicitly mentioned bell duping before. The whole thing with bells uh, is that even though they're consumable, uh, they aren't exhausted when you use them. They're exhausted when their animation completes. So. The whole gist of that trick is that you can jump and use a bell on the same frame, and then you can move around with the bell menu open, which lets you activate it in places where it should be impossible, for instance, during a free fall. Now, unlike the uh, long jumping, there isn't a rebind for that. So that is an actual frame perfect one, mm -hmm. although you don't lose anything if you mess it up. So you, you can just keep retrying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thankfully, it's not doesn't happen too many times. It feels more consistent than most frame perfect tricks for some reason. Mm -hmm. If you'll notice a second ago, I went and removed everything from my inventory. That's because I only need the belt to complete the rest of the run. I don't even need a weapon. So we're just kind of going to move through this area as fast as I can. And then I'm going to do another bell drop here, like so. And believe it or not, the run is uh, actually kind of approaching the end. Yeah, don't blink. Uh, don't blink. Like, you, you can blink. Don't let your eyes. <laughs> get too dry. But it's coming up more quickly. You remember those unicorns? I, I said to remember them. Uh, in the other run, we just run past them because they're really scary. This time, I'm going to use that 
dangerousness to my advantage. I'm going to take this guy, and I'm going to try to kite him way over to the right. This has some RNG involved. Ideally, this guy would just sprint at you, but you can see sometimes he attacks and slows down. He has a nasty tendency to just turn around. He likes to get stuck on stairs, like this staircase, and oh, you can see he just turned around. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Um, be ready on time, because if this goes well, the run will end pretty soon. Although, be aware this trick can fail, and if it fails, it'll fail at the last second. So I'll, I'll call it out if it works. I'm going to take this unicorn over here, jump past these guys. Oh, please, RNG, just be kind. There we go. Nice. Good. What are you doing? No. Come on, horsey. No, come here. Come here. <laughs> and no, no, no. <laughs> oh. OK, that, that's OK. We'll try again. I want this guy to do a specific attack, which he does about 90% of the time, except for that time, apparently. But I made a safety save for this precise reason. This unfortunately can happen, like I said. Very RNG dependent. And sadly, there's nothing you can do about it. Nope. We're back here. OK. So we're just going to cut him over again. Exact same thing as before. Not that big a deal. That's, yeah. that's why I made the safety save. Because this run is so short, the fact that there's heavy RNG doesn't matter that much, because if it doesn't work, you just reset, and all you lost was five minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, what I'm trying to do is get this unicorn to hit me in a certain way, which he almost always does. Of course, he decided not to today. <laughs> Although he's also trolling me less than he usually does with his running. That's kind of nice. OK, back over here. I guess be ready on time again. Please, please, please follow me. He doesn't always do it. There he there is. There we go. No. What do you, what do, you do? No. <laughs> no. Come, come, oh, my God. Come here. Oh, no. No. Come here. What are you doing? OK, this is OK. This is OK. This is OK. Dodge and no. Again? <gasps> oh, oh, no. <laughs> I can't believe this. I cannot believe this. OK, we're going to try that again. Uh, apologies that this is probably going to run a bit over. But we have the safety save. Just have to kite him again. This might actually be better. Um, near that spot where I'm trying to get the unicorn to cooperate me, and he's just cooperate with me, and he's not. There's these four enemies that, if you aren't familiar with this game, they look like background objects, but they're not. They are actual enemies. And if I stand next to them for like a second or two, they wake up. And because I have to be very precisely positioned for this trick to work, you really want to avoid waking them up, which you usually can unless the unicorn decides to stop and you have to go back and get him, at which point you're close enough that you wake everyone up. So to try to avoid that, I long jump past them. Please. Thank you. No, no. Oh, no. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, God. This is fine. This is fine. This is, this is not fine. Where are you going? <laughs> My goodness. OK. OK. <laughs> now we got this. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's oh my god. Okay. 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 Roll. 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 One more hit. I'm, what are you? What are you? Do <laughs> Don't turn around. You're going to. I can't believe this. What in the world are you doing? <laughs> okay. 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 Dodge. Okay. They're all over here. This is fine. Dodge that one. No, he woke up too. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Oh, no. No. Don't stop there. That's the worst place to stop. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> this is incredible. This is incredible. Okay, we're back over here. <laughs> we're going to try it again. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> Keep in mind, Grim is not doing anything wrong. No, this is, this is RNG. RNG. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I, I have to be standing in a certain <laughs> spot, and I need the unicorn to attack me in a certain way. Twice I've been there, and he did the attack that he never does. The other time, he just pulled back and aggroed all the other guys. So what I was trying to do is dodge them enough that I can, once I get hit by this guy, I'm, I'm safe. I'm safe in the sense that I'm about to die. Um, but, 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 it's a, but it's a good death. It's a good death. OK, come here. He likes to get stuck on that lid. No. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> please, please don't stay over there. I, you're kidding me. OK, come here. Where are you going? Stop. <laughs> come here. OK. This is fine. This is, this, no, it's. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> OK. Well, this is, uh, this is what you would call marathon RNG. It's fine. We'll, we'll try this one more time and hope for the best. We will hope for the best. 
This, this is unreal. Believe it or not, this is not the worst RNG I've ever gotten, but it's, it's up there. Can we maybe contract a different unicorn or something? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, come here. Be nice. Don't get stuck on the stairs. Don't get stuck on these ones either. No, please. All right, here's an area to get stuck at. Okay, this is looking good so far. So were the other ones. So we should run over here. I good. believe. I believe. Oh my God! Please take work. my energy. And time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Okay, that was something. <laughs> so yeah, the, the unicorn catches you, and if he he slams you into the ground and you use your belt at the right time, it squishes you through the floor, and the end of the game happens to be way underneath the world, right here. So that's any percent, and uh, <laughs> that's Salt and Sanctuary. For anyone who wants to get into speedrunning this, uh, God have mercy on your soul. Good luck. <laughs> it's impossible. Um, and otherwise, yeah, thank you. Thank you to Bruce and Tara for the, for the thank run. Thank you. Good run, dude. Thank you for Grimelios for those Salt and Sanctuary runs, and we will right, be right back after this ad from Twitch. Welcome to Awesome Games Done Quick 2017 for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. So far we have raised $161,516. Thank you so much for your generosity. I'd like to announce that we have officially rescheduled the CM Speedrunners from Hell run. It is going to happen Wednesday morning before Blitzbreaker. And I will give you a specific time for that. Currently, uh, Blitzbreaker is scheduled for 10.25 a.m. Eastern, so currently CM Speedrunners from Hell will be Wednesday at around 9.50 a.m. Eastern Time. And again, the prize available for that, the CM Vinyl of the soundtrack, will be available during that run. And we are going to go to an interview. We are on the road to $200,000 here this morning at AGDQ 2017. I'm Golden alongside Dram55 and OmniGamer. Uh, you guys have runs coming up in just a little bit here. And I understand that, uh, Dram, you're running Joe and Mac 2. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand OmniGamer, you're running Joe and Mac 2. Yeah, yeah. OK. How does that work? <laughs> so uh, this is all part of the Joe and Mac series uh, in Japan. Uh, it was called uh, Tatakai Genshijin, or uh, Caveman Combat, or something to that effect. Um, and for whatever reason, then their second game, uh, it's Joe and Mac 2, uh, Rookie no Boken, or uh, Rookie's Adventure, and they just completely nixed Joe and Mac, because why not? And yeah. that's, uh, it, when it came to the US, it's Congo's Caper. So we've got a back-to-back -back Joe and Mac 2 coming up. Yeah, got a little bit of the Final Fantasy treatment, just like the numbering got off and things like that mm -hmm. with the yeah. new name there. So, so Dram, I want to ask you, uh, you know, you're known for Super Mario World. We said it on the pre-show. How did you stumble across Joe and Mac 2? Or like, how did you get to this point? What happened? Feel free to call the people out who are involved <laughs> because they're probably not awake anyway. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a story, but I had a good friend, uh, Jared Ripkilla. Uh, who wanted to do a race for AGDQ. Yeah. Um, so we decided this game, because our friend Cypher runs this, uh, Joan Mac 2, 
And about a week before submissions, uh, Rip Killa had to move. He couldn't. He had other obligations. Right. He couldn't practice. I got a run together, submitted it, and uh, it got accepted. So there you here go. We are, yeah. Yeah. So the two of you kind of formed the Joe and Mac two block, which is probably the most specific block we've ever had. But, <laughs> uh, how do you feel going into the runs? I mean, is it is it a you know the skills from SNW translate at all? I mean, that's another platformer. Just uh, this run is relatively simple. Uh, it's nice. There's one boss that I'm just. Uh, gonna play it safe. Hopefully, it gives me a good pattern. Okay. Um, yeah, it should be all right. Omni, you feeling good about your run as well? I'm I'm getting ready to roll. I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Little pun there. You'll see. All right. We'll see. All right. We'll <laughs> oh see. I'll hold on to that. Oh my god. Uh, now I understand. Now in front of you there, I see you've brought this with you. This is really cool uh, and, and available to play uh, in the practice room. But tell us a little bit about this here. What are we looking at? Uh, so I'm building up to the event. Um, I made what I call mash attack, and the entire point of this is, is actually two separate boxes. Um, the point is to learn how to mash better. Uh, I mean, for a lot of games, and especially in speedrunning, like mashing is a really important skill. And like any skill, you can get better at it as you do it more often. But uh, a lot of the limiting pieces that people just don't know how to do it better or what their weaknesses are. So I came up with this idea that uh, you can come up with a very specific tester that uh, figures out like, well, what, how, how good are you keeping up a rate? Are you having a good uh, uh, time up? How long are you keeping the button depressed? That kind of thing. And really so, trying to, to help people uh, get to the point where they can see like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm doing this. Yeah. I need to do it a little better. And uh, So it's essentially like a mashing leaderboard. I mean, we can figure out <laughs> who the best mashers here are at, uh, at the event. Yeah, and I do have uh, a leaderboard program, actually, that's keeping track as people go through. Ooh. And the point of that is not only just to show who's the best, but it keeps track of uh, individual times as well. So you can see, over the course of the event, are you getting better? Are you able to actually increase yeah. that rate and go from there? I love the sports science of it. I mean, it feels like, you know, like, hey, am I faster than uh, Dexter at mashing? Or so you can go and find that <laughs> out. I mean, he's got the leaderboard there, so you can see how the you stack probably up. No. Unfortunately, he's got my mashing on there, too. So everybody can find out that they're better than me. But... Uh, I'm probably way off the leaderboard at this point, so maybe they won't even notice. But, yeah. uh, now, I understand on the front here, too, you see you have the buttons on the top people can mash, yep. but then people can plug top. in the controllers of their choice yeah, I've on got, the front uh, there. Yeah, I've got ports for NES, Super Nintendo, and Genesis uh, in this, this early prototypes. Um, but you also see that there's two of them, and they're different colored. Uh, the reasoning behind that is that there's also a, a battle system for it. So towards the end of the week, uh, I'm going to set this up, uh, and you can actually do kind of a, a virtual arm wrestling competition with mashing uh, between these two. Nice. So uh, we're going to have a tournament somewhere along the way to find the, <laughs> the really the actual best masher. There here. we go. I'm going to go play Bishy Bosh in the arcade to practice a little bit, and then I'll come back and try again. Oh, yeah. All right. I want to take uh, some Twitter questions here. And uh, let's see here. My first time getting to push that button. Look at that. It just pops up on the screen. It's so fancy. Uh, from D Master, the question is, what got you into speedrunning Joe and Mac 2? And I guess this can go to both of you since you're both playing Joe and Mac 2, technically. Yeah. We could, uh, Omni, you can answer because I already answered. Yeah. Um, so a long time ago, I lived in different <laughs> conditions. I was uh, doing, I've been collecting Super Nintendo games for a while. And uh, I was lucky enough to be around a bunch of uh, used game stores. So I just kind of make the rounds every weekend, spend some time looking through. And uh, somewhere along the way, Joe and Mac is one of the one, or Joe and Mac too, uh, Congo's Caper, there you go. even, is uh, <laughs> one of the yeah. games that showed up. Um, and I make a point of every game that I pick up, I put in at least some time playing it, like really trying to understand them. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just find those games that click with you. And this was this is one of them. So uh, I enjoyed it had fun and you know from there it's a matter of well I want to enjoy it further and take it to the next level and that's where you come in with a speed run. Seems pretty reasonable to me. Uh, were you passing that question Duran? Uh, yeah, I you already it. explained yeah, it. I yeah, I already explained it. I thought you could give a different answer this time see if you catch any but <laughs> uh, uh, all right so the I guess the next question then is uh, when was the first time that you both played these games? Uh, and I guess you kind of also answered that a little bit, but uh, just relatively like, you know. Yeah, August. August. Yeah, so you were playing pretty recently. Yeah, it was a, yeah. a couple weeks before the yeah, uh, when deadline. I, uh, when I first played Congo, it was um, probably 2013. Okay. So it's, it's been a long time coming. This is its uh, first appearance at a, uh, well, at a prim and proper GDQ. I think I did it at a bonus stream back when those existed. But um, that was uh, quite, a, quite a few years ago. And uh, I'm finally happy to have it in an event. 
All right, it's time for a nonsensical one. Let's throw this one up here. Uh, from Game Maker, Rex from Toy Story or Ducky from The Land Before Time? It's a difficult question, uh, one that I debated very much so before the interview, but uh, now I want to hear your answers. It's intimidating. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's got to be Ducky because uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't remember when... Uh, Ducky has never thrown me under the bus when playing Toy Story on Super Nintendo. So there you go. I can, That's, I can yeah, with that. I, I sense a grudge there. Okay. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll say Rex, and I have nothing to back up that answer. That's okay. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, there you go. Uh, a couple more questions here. We got one. Uh, I hear that Dram is a bit musically talented. Does that help him finding sound cues in runs? That's from Zephyroth. Uh, it actually does. More in Kaizo than Joe and Mac. Um, yeah, but in Kaizo, in some instances, I would sing songs in my head, uh, knowing that on certain bars or uh, you know, measures of that song, I would have to you know, deal with movement or whatever. So it has helped. OK, good to know. Yeah. Now, now, I'm noticing a trend here in the remaining questions here. Uh, let's see if you guys yeah. can figure it out at home. Uh, we've got one from Krista Sowen. Why is Dram so beautiful? The world will never now, know. Now, hold on. Don't answer that just yet, because we got another one here. <laughs> OK, yeah. We got one from Sumi. Oh, Dram, how does it feel to be a dream boat? <laughs> So uh, with that in mind, I guess, how do you feel about that? Uh, thank you for the flattering questions, Sumi and Christos. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. My parents, that's the answer. Thank you, Mom and Dad. There you go. Genetics. Thanks, that's what Mom. It is. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you guys so much. We'll see your runs in just a little bit. I believe Magic Sword is coming up next. So stay tuned, everybody, for HDQ 2017. We're still rolling along here. All right. Thank you, Omni, Dram, and Golden for that interview. Meanwhile, we have a $5 anonymous donation. Lost my aunt to cancer last month, so all the more reason to donate. Great work for a great cause. According to MatPat, killing the animals actually saves the universe, so there we go. Greetings from Belgium, and keep up the good work. $75 from Anonymous, who simply says, great work out there, guys. Keep it up. Kill all the animals. Speedthony Runthanos donates $10 and says, thanks for a good show as always. Looking forward to the task block. Sonoras donates $50 and says, I'm slowly creeping up to one year cancer-free. My brother is now cancer-free for several months. You guys are doing wonderful things. Keep it up. Save the animals. David Vance donates $25 and says, thanks for giving me something to do other than the work I'm supposed to do. Zixor donates $5 and says, AGDQ is the best way to start the year. Always. Miss Dragon 01 donates $75 and says, Cheers from the donation station. Let's show some love to Battle Clash Mirror Mode Incentive and fast, fast, fast. We got this. That is referring to the mirror mode incentive for Battle Clash coming up later today, where the runner playing with a super scope will use a mirror to aim instead of looking at the TV. That is currently at $465 out of 2,500. 